Welcome to a new segment of Expert Insights hosted by the IPS. Today we have Dr. Manuel Montes, Senior Advisor of Finance and Development at the South Centre in Geneva. He will be discussing the pros and cons of bilateral investment treaties, a particularly important factor in Sri Lanka's new drive towards attracting uh, foreign direct investment. Dr. Montes, thank you very much for visiting the IPS and your time. Uh, we are discussing bilateral investment treaties and Sri Lanka is in the process of negotiating several free trade agreements with India, China and Singapore for example, which also include chapters on investment. Uh, what benefits would a developing country like Sri Lanka get from including an investment chapter in such agreements? The idea of uh, investment uh, chapters and in bilateral investment treaties is to give some guarantee to uh, foreign investors that they will not be subject to uh, arbitrary expropriation by their host countries. And it provides them with a uh, legal system which they can theoretically trust more than the legal system that uh, might, they think might not be, might have weaknesses in the host country. The problem with the, the way the system has uh, evolved is that the, the conception of what is uh, protected investment has expanded uh, in a very arbitrary way. And recent experiences have shown that uh, there, there are ways to limit the kind of coverage so that they actually fulfill the interests of both the host country and the foreign investor. So now that the Sri Lanka is uh, undertaking these uh, negotiations, it can draw upon the experiences uh, of other countries in trying to be more specific about what is protected investment so that the investors can feel that uh, they are protected under these treaties. At the same time, the host government does not open itself up to frivolous and uh, unjust uh, kinds of actions by the foreign investor. So investment treaties such as these do send a positive signal to other countries, mm -hmm. uh, but how would a small economy like Sri Lanka actually attract FDI into their country? Uh, well, the investment treaty provides uh, sort of a, a signal, but actually the, our experience has been, when we look at other countries, that the attraction of foreign investment has almost very little to do with the investment protection, investment treatment. It has to do with a stable economy, a growing economy, the ability of uh, the investor to undertake his normal business activities in the economy in, in, a, uh, uh, in a predictable manner. And then for countries that have uh, uh, mineral resources, the access to mineral resources, etc., uh, etc. Et so actually most uh, and uh, reliable uh, utilities like water and electricity. So these are the most important things that a government should do to attract foreign investment. I always say it's the same kind of things that any government would do for its own private sector. So if a government will do the right thing for its private sector, it is doing the right thing to, to attract foreign investment. Uh, there is a lot of controversy in terms of investor-state dispute mechanisms. Mm -hmm. um, and that has, been, that has been an element that has been criticized quite a lot mm -hmm. when it comes to investment treaties. How would countries uh, protect themselves from the negative potential negative elements mm -hmm. from this? I think uh, the first thing that they could do is to try to make sure that the conception and the legal definition of uh, what is expropriation is well defined in the treaty. If it is very vague, then uh, arbitral panels have used this as an excuse to, uh, to impose uh, restrictions on uh, penalties right? on, the, on the host governments that have become very costly. For example, if there is a breach of contract of, by, the, by the investor, 
and the state actually undertakes the policy to, uh, uh, to terminate the contract because of the breach of contract, that should not be considered uh, as a, a arbitrary expropriation. Right? That's one. The second thing that uh, probably uh, host countries' governments can do is to to decide that only certain investments will be covered will be protected because there are many other kinds of investments that are covered under other uh, uh, other contracts or other systems and there are other kinds of uh, uh, protections that, that these, uh, uh, these investments actually are protected. For example, trademarks are normally protected under another system, right? They are not protected, they're, they're protected under the intellectual property system and they don't need to be included in an investment treaty where they can actually be used as it has been used recently to try to prevent uh, the countries of Uruguay and Australia from undertaking uh, tobacco, uh, anti-tobacco measures. So. Uh, finally, Dr. Montes, uh, the assumption is that investment tends to follow trade. Yes. Uh, how would developing countries, particularly small developing countries, economies like Sri Lanka, strengthen this nexus between trade and investment? Yeah, well, we know that foreign investors uh, provide uh, access to foreign markets. Uh, by, uh, but uh, my own uh, understanding of the Sri Lankan economy is it's a very fierce uh, trading country, right? So even on the basis of just the preconditions for uh, attracting foreign investment, I think uh, Sri Lanka has a lot of these uh, conditions. But to strengthen the relationship between uh, foreign investment and, and trade, uh, I think it is uh, quite important for Sri Lanka to think about uh, inviting investors that will help it diversify its uh, economy and its uh, exporting uh, capabilities. Right? Uh, uh, both pa part of this is uh, trying to I know it has been very successful in particular sectors, right? Uh, but it can try probably to think about other sectors where foreign investors can come in to, uh, to be able to draw on Sri Lanka's advantages in terms of its well, uh, uh, very productive labor and well educated, uh, disciplined labor, uh, and its ability to actually produce many of the goods that are of interest to. The, for, the world markets. So by by relating very well with respect to trade, by strengthening its own capability with trade, I think that's a very important uh, uh, avenue or, or pathway for Sri Lanka to be able to to attract more foreign investment. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Montes, and we hope to see you again at IPS soon. Well, I'm, I was very happy to be able to visit IPS and I'm very happy to be able to give a seminar here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.